हेलो एवरीवन ओपन योर हिस्ट्री एंड सिविक्स बुक क्लास एट लेसन फोर द यूनाइटेड नेशंस इन दिस लेसन वी हैड लर्न अबाउट व्हाट इज द यूनाइटेड नेशंस फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द यूएन एम्स एंड प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ द यूएन स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द यूएन व्हिच इंक्लूडेड द सिक्स प्रिंसिपल ऑर्गन्स द जनरल असेंबली द सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल द सेक्रेटेरिएट द इकोनॉमिक एंड सोशल काउंसिल द इंटरनेशनल कोर्ट ऑफ जस्टिस and the trusteeship council we had also learnt about the initiatives taken by the un and the limitations of the un now today we are going to discuss un and india now before discussing this topic let us recall the definitions and the terms related to the previous topic definitions the united nations charter apartheid veto power human rights and the last is the un system answer these cross questions where is the headquarters of the un tell any three principles of the un where is the headquarters of icj tell in brief about the general assembly tell the functions of icj name an inactive organ of the un new terms related to today's topic are government the group of people working together to govern a country or state the general assembly the world parliament disarmament disarmament means to stop production of nuclear weapons and destroy the existing ones or in simple words you can say no arm race agency a body providing a specific service full forms related to the topic who world health organization fao food and agriculture organization unesco united nations educational scientific and cultural organization aids acquired immuno deficiency syndrome now open page 163 of the book un and india as we all know that india is one of the founding members of the united nations india has adopted the strategy of solving the disputes with the other countries through the united nations india has always contributed on a large scale to peacekeeping forces of un by sending soldiers whenever required and india had also sent a team of doctors to treat the wounded soldiers in the korean war indian delegates or representatives on various posts in the united nations have contributed to the welfare with their knowledge and experience now let us start up with the reading India is one of the founding members of the UN. She is an enthusiastic supporter of the cause of UN. Enthusiastic means keen or eager. The British government allowed the Indian representatives to participate in the activities of the UN even though India was not independent at the time of UN's establishment. As we all know that India got its independence in 1947 and UN was formed in 1945. now when uno was formed at that time india was not independent india was under the british rule but then to the british government allowed the indian representatives to take part in the activities of the united nations and this process continued after independence too shrimati vijay lakshmi pandit was elected as the first woman president of the general assembly and she was elected as the first woman president of the general assembly in 1953 india has full faith in the ideals of the un and has always cooperated with un in achieving its aims and objectives india's contribution to the un is as follows now before continuing the reading let us discuss the india's contribution to the united nations india has been The member of the United Nations right from the beginning and is actively involved in all the activities of the United Nations in maintaining peace in the world. India gave its full support to the UN peacekeeping efforts by sending peacekeeping forces to various parts of the world. India has actively participated in relief operations of the UN. Many Indians work in UN agencies. And India played an important role in the freedom of many countries from foreign rule. Now let us read from the book. India's contribution to the UN is as follows. 
All peacekeeping efforts of the UN have been actively supported by India. That means India is supporting the United Nations by sending peacekeeping forces to various parts of the world. It has always been among the top three contributors to the peacekeeping operations. Second, India played an important role in the freedom of several countries from foreign rule, such as Ghana, Tunisia, Morocco, and Algeria. That means India had given the full support to these countries in gaining the freedom from the foreign rule. India firmly believes in disarmament. Disarmament means not only stopping production but also destroying existing nuclear weapons. This issue has been brought forward several times on the UN platform. Issue means matter. That means the matter of disarmament had been brought forward by many countries in order to maintain peace in the world and India too believes in disarmament. India has always been one of the first countries to send relief aid and help to other countries in situations of natural calamity or to fight hunger and poverty. Situations means conditions and calamity means disaster. That means India always provides monetary as well as non-monetary help in cases of the natural disasters. India provides funds as well as provide non-monetary help by means of sending supplies and manpower for rescue missions. So, we can conclude that India supports all the UN activities in maintaining the world peace and India's contribution as a member of Security Council and other organs has always been noteworthy. Now, the next topic, UN help to India. The relations of India and the UN are not one-sided. While India has helped the UN realize its objectives of peace and security, the UN has also helped India through its specialized agencies. Now let us discuss how the United Nations help India. UN help to India. The United Nations also supports India as the world's largest democracy in countries' ambitious commitments to rapid change and development priorities. The United Nations help India through its specialized agencies like WHO, that is the World Health Organization, FAO, that is the Food and Agriculture Organization, UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, etc. The main focus areas include poverty and urbanization, health, water and sanitation, education and employment, nutrition and food security during the times of natural disasters, and youth development. That means the United Nations provides strategic support to India to help the country achieve its aspirations to promote sustainable development. Now let us read from the book. The World Health Organization, that is WHO, has actively taken part in the fight against diseases such as smallpox, tuberculosis, malaria, polio and AIDS. Smallpox is an infectious disease caused by variola virus and tuberculosis is a disease caused by bacteria that most often affect the lungs. Malaria is a mosquito-borne infectious disease that affects humans and other animals. Polio is a highly infectious disease caused by virus. It attacks the nervous system and it mainly affects the children under 5 years of age. And AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. WHO is giving full support to India in eradicating all these epidemics and also organizing the campaigns to fight against these diseases. It has given funds, information and drugs to help eradicate these diseases. Eradicate means remove. A large number of WHO doctors have visited India and trained our medical teams to look after public health. So, we can say that WHO aims to achieve the highest possible level of health for all the people in the world. The Food and Agriculture Organization, that is FAO, has set up several research centers for wheat, rice, fish and potato production. That means the main aim of the Food and Agriculture Organization is to eradicate hunger and this agency is supporting India in eradicating hunger from India.
the world bank has financed our five year plans and many other projects financed means provided funds that means the world bank had provided funds for five year plans and the other projects like sarv shiksha abhiyan the pradhan mantri sadak yojana program etc unesco that is united nations educational scientific and cultural organization has given help in expansion of education learning new ideas and techniques in the field of education and in promoting cultural contact with other countries so we can say that the main aim of unesco is to spread the education and to preserve the cultural heritage and unesco is giving full support to india in preserving its cultural heritage and in expansion of education so we can conclude that both india and the united nations are helping each other in achieving their aims or objectives now i hope lesson is clear to you now your today's homework is to learn lesson 4 the united nations